And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. Just last week, the world took time out to remember the Holocaust, where we know six million Jewish people died at the hands of Nazis in their concentration camps. Evil the world should never, ever forget. But those of the Jewish faith weren't the only people in those death camps. They also included gays, some commonly known as nomad, the Romani people, foreign and political prisoners, the homeless, and also Jehovah's Witnesses. We have some guests here on The Factor Uncensored tonight to talk about that dark part of America or the world history. Doran Gamble and Ruben Espinales, glad to have you here on The Factor Uncensored. A lot of people, when they think about the Holocaust, Reuben, it's only the Jewish community that they think about. But like we said, there were a long list of people, and Jehovah's Witnesses were on that list. You're exactly right. And it's, uh, it's something that has affected so many people, dis displaced uh, so many people, uh, a lot of people died. But then uh, there was Jehovah's Witnesses that were part of that group. Uh, when we think about over 4,200 went to concentration camps, 1,600 ended up uh, dying at the hands of uh, the Nazi regime. And when we think about those examples, uh, they stand out because they chose to be in that position because they would not support the atrocities that the government was committing. And they also, it's my understanding through reading history, they gave the Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses an opportunity to sign a waiver. Like, I denounce my religion and you could live. And they refused to do it. That's right. It's interesting. One story bears that out. Wilhelm Kusaro, he was 25 years old. If you imagine a young person like that. They told him he could sign a waiver right before he was standing in front of the firing squad. So can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. He puts on the blindfold and they say, here's one last chance. And he said, this young person, I'll give you one request, shoot straight. Wow. What integrity. So they wanted the witnesses to change their faith. They wanted them to kill Jews and others. They wanted them to do this even though Many of these witnesses were Aryan Germans, mm -hmm. the same race that Hitler was. And what we're talking about when it came to the Jehovah's Witnesses, they were one of the few groups where they were persecuted for their religion. The others were political stands, how they looked, and, and, and we're talking about religion here. That's right. Uh, Kristen King is a historian that summarized the, uh, the thought that there, there was... Uh, the effort was of every Jehovah's Witness to ensure that even the most minimal Im uh, influence of a Nazi a Nazism would, uh, would not affect the life of a Jehovah's Witness. Something as simple as a Heil Hitler was something that Jehovah's Witnesses refused to do because Heil Hitler uh, uh, made it seem that Hitler would provide some form of salvation. Mm -hmm. By Bible reading, we knew that that's not the case. So even if something as simple as refusing to do how Hitler really just emphasized how different and the refusal to support uh, those atrocities. And Dorian, are people surprised that there are much, there are many more groups out there than just the Jews who suffered under the, the boot of the Nazis? They're shocked to hear that, really, if, because the students of history, it's kind of swept under the rug. But the important thing to realize, it's not dead history because of the fact that we're experiencing injustices today. Yeah. So as people look at that injustice, they can find ways to cope. And there are still countries today where Jehovah's Witnesses are persecuted and put into jail, right? That's exactly right. Uh, in 1945, uh, one, one of our publications mentioned that it could be that those ideas that were part of the Nazi regime of uh, hatred towards smaller groups, uh, oppression, that it could very well resurface, rebranded, and adopted by a new generation. So that's happening, for example, in Russia. Uh, it's just one example I can share with you. There's a 70-year-old uh, person. Uh, she has heart failure. She just had a stroke. She was condemned to two years in prison for simply talking about the Bible mm -hmm. in Russia. So it's something that's happening uh, all around the world. And it's, uh, it's one of those things where if we don't keep in mind what those lessons were from the Holocaust, it could very well uh, happen again. Now, if your members, members or members of your congregation are found where they are arrested, but you guys do support them with legal teams to help them out, right? That's correct. We try our best to make sure we support them, but the best way is having that strong bond. We call ourselves brothers and sisters. That's how we feel about each other. And because of that, that strong bond helps them to endure. That's according to one scripture we love in Romans 15, 4, through our endurance and through the scriptures, we find comfort. 
And that's what we want people to have, too. We encourage anybody who's having a situation where they're experiencing injustice, they're feeling down. Perhaps it's the social injustice I think you're talking about later in the show. There's a, there's a hope for that. And, and JW.org has a lot of good resources. We encourage people to go there to find the same thing that helped those witnesses in the 40s to endure. I got my app. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us here on The Factor Uncensored. We appreciate the knowledge and information and history as well. Still ahead here.